Oh. <laughs> oh. A couple months ago, I made a video about these. These are 2.7 volt 500 farad supercapacitors. In that video, I talked about what supercapacitors generally were and some stuff that you could do with them, and I played around with some of these individually. I also said that sometime in the near future, I'd be making a supercapacitor bank that included all of these. And now is that time. So today I'm going to be making a capacitor bank that wires all 12 of these supercapacitors in series. I'll be wiring them in series to increase the voltage since the main limitation on the power output of these guys is their low voltage. Each one of these is rated for 2.7 volts, but I'm going to play it a little safe and just go up to 2.5 volts. So with all 12 of these, that's a total voltage of 30. If I were going to do this the proper way, I would introduce a charging circuit for all of these to ensure that each one maintains exactly 2.5 volts. But I tend to do things my own way, and I will continue to do that now. So I'm going to skip the charging circuit and just see if I can charge them all simultaneously which is definitely a bad idea and may cost me a lot, but we'll see. But the first thing I need to do to make this capacitor bank is I need a frame to hold everything together so they're not all loose like they are now. So step one is to design something to hold everything together. Now that I've got the capacitor bank frame designed up in CAD, I can go to 3D print it on my newly finished large format FDM 3D printer. This will take many hours and will be a good solid test print for the new printer. This thing is really stuck on there. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get it off. There we go. That's a good looking piece. This is the first sizable print that I've done on my new big 3D printer, and it's definitely turned out really well. The whole thing is very rigid. It could definitely use a little bit of cleanup, but it doesn't really need it. So I've got my frame piece here, which turned out pretty well. And then I've got all the supercapacitors, which will attach to it. Each of these circles should fit one capacitor, snaps in pretty well. And then the electrodes will stick out the other side. There's a lot of different ways that you could fix these in here. Most of them snap in pretty well, so you might not even need any kind of adhesive, but I'm still going to use one anyways. I don't want these to be permanently stuck in here. I might want to take them out for some reason. So I'm going to use one of the quickest and simplest adhesives and I'm just going to hot glue all these capacitors into place like that. So I've got everything glued into place here. It's not the best gluing job, I definitely use too much in some places and too little in others, but it'll do. I paid careful attention to the direction that I put these capacitors in here. Since I'm going to be wiring these in series, I need to connect the positive to the next capacitor's negative, and so on. So I line them up so that I can wire it down one end, up another, down one, and up another. So then the two electrodes for the entire bank will be right here and right here. So I've got this 16 gauge wire that I'm going to use to wire everything in series here. This wire is definitely a little undersized for the amount of current that could potentially be running through here, but it'll do at least for now. When I first tried to solder to these electrodes, it was fairly difficult, so this might take a while.
After about an hour of soldering, I've come up with this. You might notice that I disconnected one of these capacitors here. And that's because when I tried to apply charge to it, it didn't draw any current. So for whatever reason, this capacitor is dead. In the end, it's not the most beautiful soldering job by any means, but it'll still get the job done. And this thing is pretty massive. It's got quite the weight to it. By the size alone, you can guess that it could store a ton of energy. So this capacitor bank is 12 500 farad 2.7 volt capacitors. When charging it up, I wouldn't really go beyond 2.7. I'd just stay down at 2.5. That would mean that with all 12 of these in series, it'd be a total of 30 volts. And like a battery, the capacitance only increases when wired in parallel. Since we don't have any parallel connections here, the capacitance for the overall capacitor bank remains at 500 farads. So we can use this to calculate the total energy that can be stored inside this capacitor bank. You can think of this capacitor bank as one massive capacitor, and the energy stored in the capacitor is modeled as one half CV squared, where C is your capacitance and V is your voltage. So in our case, our C value is 500 and our V is 30. So one half CV squared is one half times 500 times 30 squared, which comes out as 225,000. That's 225,000 joules that could be potentially stored in this one capacitor bank. Now this is a ton of energy. For a frame of reference, a gunshot is two or 3,000 joules, and this is 225,000. So this capacitor bank can hold a ton of energy and it can output a very high current. However, there is a drawback. It can't release all this energy instantaneously like you would think with a normal electrolytic capacitor although it can still release energy fairly quickly. A capacitor becomes fully depleted after five time constants. And the time constant is the resistive load in ohms times capacity in farads. So since this has such a high capacity, the time constant will be relatively high. So even with a one ohm load, it would take this capacitor bank 500 seconds to undergo one fifth of its discharge time. This one time constant does, however, account for the majority of the energy stored in the capacitors. 63% of the total energy in the capacitors is released in one time constant. So when the capacitors are fully charged, they will release far more energy in a given time than they will when they're mostly depleted. So those are all the numbers pertaining to the supercapacitor bank. And so it's about time that I get testing it. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to be doing this the proper way with a full charging circuit. At least for now, I'm just going to be charging it across the two outputs. Now a standard charging circuit would charge each individual capacitor separately, ensuring that each one reaches a certain point and stays at that point. It would distribute the energy out equally to each of the capacitors so that none of them got too much and, and exceeded their rated voltage. But you can still charge it across the input and output. It's not the smartest things to do, but it should still work. If each of these capacitors had the exact same internal resistance, then this wouldn't be a concern and it would charge across the two outputs just fine. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect theoretical world and each of these capacitors has a slightly different internal resistance. So when you charge across the two outputs, each one will charge at a very slightly different voltage. But I'll be careful to monitor them, so I'm not too worried about it. So right now I've got the benchtop power supply to 12 volts. I'm gonna start with that. Right out of the gate, it's drawing the max current, which is five amps that my power supply can output. So the total voltage is now at 12 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and check all of the individual voltages for each capacitor to ensure that they're around the same area and not getting too close to the 2.7 volt rating. The individual capacitors are each at around 1.1 volts, give or take about 100 millivolts. So that's about what I expected, so now I'm going to increase the voltage a little bit more. So 
it looks like this capacitor in the corner here is taking the most charge since it has the highest voltage. So I'm going to keep on increasing this voltage until this one in the corner gets around 2.5 volts. At that point, any more increase could potentially destroy the capacitors. So I've gotten the overall voltage up to 23.6. It's still drawing half an amp, but I think that's about as high as I'm gonna get it, since this one capacitor in the corner has already reached two and a half volts. So now that this thing is almost fully charged up, I think I'd better make some sparks. Oh! <laughs> oh! That was really good. Oh, my heart's pumping. Oh! Oh! That wasn't just sparks, that was, that was plasma. Oh! Smoke's coming off of that. Oh, that's very fun. Holy crap, this is amazing. This is so good. Oh, <laughs> oh. I really, I really hope that the power and just the sheer awesomeness comes through on camera. Oh, it's beautiful. That was bad. <laughs> so, um, some stuff happened. I got, I got wounded. I, I don't even know how that happened. I've got a few burn marks on my arms from solder that flew off. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened there is I thought something bad might happen, then ignored that thought, and then did it, and then something bad happened. When I first put these output wires on here, I put a little bit of solder on the ends just to keep the wires from fraying too much. And when I did that, I thought to myself, hey, there's going to be a lot of current going through this, Maybe I shouldn't have solder on it because it might just melt the solder and stick the two outputs together. And I was absolutely right. So I stuck the two ends together, the solder melted, and the two wire ends stuck together. So I kind of freaked out. You might have seen in the video that all the solder points on here started to glow red and a lot of the solder just started to melt, which was very, very good, very fortunate. So I just grabbed this and I yanked it off as quickly as I could. Fortunately, the solder was melting anyway, so it came off pretty easily. But yeah, for a few seconds straight, I was discharging the maximum amount of current through here, which was a very bad idea. Fortunately, nothing really bad happened. It's not really possible that this would do anything too terrible since these are meant to handle a lot of current they're definitely not going to blow up or anything like that and there's no plasma so there's no fire but it definitely startled me and i'm pretty sure that all of these capacitors are still totally fine most of them still have the majority of their charge left on them and based off the fact that i can still take a reading from them i th i think they're still very usable which also makes sense since they're meant to store a ton of current and they're meant to handle a lot of current but I think, I think that accurately shows how much power this thing can have. Not only does it create beautiful sparks that may or may not be creating plasma, but it can almost instantaneously melt solder. So hypothetically, it could melt steel at a point, maybe. But just based off the nature of supercapacitors, and capacitors in general, this thing really isn't dangerous. I mean, it's already super low voltage. It really can't do anything to harm you, but that doesn't mean it isn't powerful. This thing is 
very powerful. It's kind of like wiring a bunch of lithium ion cells in series and then discharging it with no load whatsoever. Except these are kind of meant to do that. Lithium ion battery would blow up. These take it like a champ. I was gonna try and do some more testing with this and discharge it through some electromagnetic coils and stuff like that just to see what it can do. But I've kind of torn it apart at several points and I've already drawn blood. So I think this might be a good time to end this. It also might be a good thing for me to say, don't try this at home, or at least don't try this unless you have a healthy understanding of the power that some of these supercapacitors can have. And also note that it's doing this without full charge. One of these capacitors was at two and a half volts, not even the rated 2.7, and most of them were only around two volts. This thing could still output significantly more power. And I would like to reiterate that this really isn't dangerous, but it is absolutely, almost scarily impressive. When you think about it, this is quite the simple thing. I mean, all it is is just a bunch of capacitors wired in series, but it might be one of the coolest things that I have ever made. I'm really not sure what I should do with this, so I'd be very open to suggestions about what I could try with this, maybe some experiments, different things that I could make that could use a lot of really high current. I think this thing could power a lot of really cool devices, and I'd love to know what other people would like to see done with this. So there you go, a 30 volt, 500 farad supercapacitor bank. It's certainly a beautiful thing to look at. And I will definitely do more things with this in the future, but that's all I have for now. Bye.